guys, today we're gonna synchronize the throttle bodies. I got this sync tool from Motion Pro. And basically what you do is when you hook up the tool, there's going to be adjustment screws. You can see where the screwdriver is right over there where I'm pointing. That's the adjustment screw for that particular throttle body. Each one has its own adjustment screw. And on the Hayabusa, it should be done every 7,500 miles. That's what the owner's manual is asking for. I have 20,000 miles and I never done this before. And I'm hoping I'm gonna restore some lost power. If there is any lost power, of course. And you want to do this after you check your valves, after you adjust the valves, after you clean the filter. Basically what you're doing is you're synchronizing all the throttle bodies to pull equal vacuum. Because you don't want like this throttle body to pull more vacuum than the other ones. Because that, that's not gonna make the bike run smooth or perform at its best. And I want to mention if you have a Gen 1 Busa, you're good. But on a Gen 2 and obviously Gen 3 Busa, they have a little more electronics. You're going to want to unplug this guy here for the idle. That's going to cause a check engine light, an FI light, fuel injection light. But that's okay. Afterwards, we're going to clear that fault code with this guy here. So that's going to plug in the computer of the bike. And what you want to do that is if you don't unplug that and you have the sync tool on, that's going to cause really bad idling when you try to adjust it. The bike's going to shut off and all bads of stuff. So by unplugging it, yes, you do trigger a fall code or check engine light, but the bike goes in the preset mode for idle and then you can do your adjustments and fix that check engine light later. Okay, now first we have to set up the tool. Okay, now this hose, they want you to cut four equal lengths. Okay, now what I did is I put tape here to hold the ends together. And now here I'm gonna cut it. I got this tool that works amazing to cut hoses and PEX tubing. Actually, that's what it is for PEX tubing, but it works amazing for the hoses. Okay, now that I cut it, I'm gonna do the same thing two more times so I can get four hoses out of this hose. All right, guys, I have it folded again. I put tape to hold it, so I'm gonna cut it right here. Always measure twice, cut once. Okay, now we're gonna install the restrictors. It's these little brass thingies right here. And they go like this inside the, the hose. But before I do that, it's going to be best if I hook up the, the hoses on the tool itself so there's no confusion. Okay, now we can get back to the restrictor thingies. And you're gonna need this guy. This is gonna help you right here. You take one of these and you stick it inside here. And then you take this plastic thingy and you push it in until the hose stops it right here. And of course you repeat the same with other hoses. Okay, all of those are in place. Now we're gonna put the hook on. So the hook just goes here. And then you bend over this tab. Damn, that took a, a good amount of force. Okay, now once you do that, you're gonna have to calibrate this and you should calibrate every time before you use it. You take this, you plug one end up, and then you plug each one of these hoses here. And this is only to calibrate it, calibrate the tool. And then with the little hose they give you, you put this in the throttle body that has the cables on it. Like on my bike, it's um, the one here on the side. On some other bikes, it can be in, in the middle. So I'm, I'm gonna plug that little hose on this throttle body so I can calibrate the tool. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you how I removed all these vacuum hoses where the tool is gonna plug in. You see this hose here? It was really hard to remove them. So I'm gonna show you what I did and how I suffered, but I got them off. 
and after that we're gonna calibrate the tool all right guys you can see this hose doesn't want to budge it is really stuck on there i try to pull it out with my tool but it doesn't work so another good trick is spray brake cleaner on it so it gets softer and then with pliers you can push it in push that hose in and then kind of twist it as much as you can of course without damaging it and then i'm gonna use this hook to pull on it and this to pry okay, i'm just gonna try to work a little bit more push it in and twist it even more you just gotta be patient all right guys after pushing it twisting it it should eventually come off oh yeah here we go you can see that was a struggle and I'm thinking this is the hardest part of the job. Now the other ones are further inside and I'm gonna be honest with you that's gonna be even harder to get those off. But you gotta do what you gotta do you know. Just kind of use the same procedure. Spray it, twist it, push it in, wiggle it, eventually it's gonna come off. Okay guys I finally took all those vacuum hoses off see right here cylinder one is uh number two the number three is back here and number four right next to it i'm kind of embarrassed to tell you how long it took me it took me a while i'm gonna be honest with you but that's gonna be the hardest part of the job and you just gotta insist um twist them pry them spray a little bit brake clean don't go too crazy with a brake clean because this stuff is pretty strong it could damage your paint or or any finished surfaces so go easy with that and also it's kind of flammable well not kind of it is flammable finally one other thing i did is i put a socket here to have the gas tank sit up higher to stick in my hands in there okay guys i hooked it up to the first throttle body where the cables are attached to and also to not create a vacuum leak i hooked up the other three throttle bodies with the vacuum hose that i removed and the one that goes to the first one i clamped it off so there's no vacuum leak so now i'm gonna loosen these counterclockwise to release the fluid i'm gonna start up the bike and calibrate these so they're equal and what that does it, it calibrates the tool and after that we can synchronize the throttle bodies and they want you to have this about one third of the height when you synchronize it okay now you saw how there was a gap there if that happens you turn all of these clockwise and that raises the, f the fluid up in here. And then you shake the tool down like a thermometer. And it's saying to turn all of them clockwise until they bottom out. So let's try it. Uh-huh. See, that did the trick. Okay, we got it. Now I'm going to turn all of these counterclockwise again to reset them. And start up the bike again to calibrate the tool. Okay, now I'm gonna hook each one of these into each throttle body, starting with the first one here. I'm gonna start on this side and work my way towards that side. All right, broskis, I took this off. I hooked up all of these to each throttle body. So now I'm gonna start the bike and adjust it. And I want to mention that every time you do an adjustment, it's best to give a little blip on the throttle. And don't go past then 3500 RPMs or don't blip it too fast because it could suck up the fluid in the engine. It's not going to damage it, but you're going to have to recharge your tool with fluid. Okay, let's see how much off this is going to be because uh, like I said, I have 20,000 miles. So let's see what we got. You can 
AC number three is pretty off. I'm gonna try to bring everything uh, close to number two. Broskis, I took the tool off. I want to mention it's easier when you take these hoses off to like twist them and pull them at the same time coming off from the bike. Don't just pull them so you don't tear them apart or something. And then I put the T-fitting together like this so it doesn't get all dusted and stuff to store it. Okay, now I plugged back in all those vacuum hoses and also plugged in this connector here. Now it's time for the software part. So you go on this uh, Heel Tech website. I'm gonna have the link, of course. You go all the way to the bottom. Go right here, software. Software right here. And then in this case, we got Suzuki. You download this program. Once you download the program, then you can launch it. Now I'm gonna connect this OBD tool to the bike. And that's gonna go right here. This is a connector, you just pop this. This comes off. And be careful of the exhaust, because it's hot. You don't want the melt of wire. At this end, the USB is gonna go on the computer, obviously. I'm gonna turn the, the key on. Now here. Okay, now I'm gonna hit connect. Boom. Okay, we see we have that fault code. That's from the connector that I had unplugged. Manifold absolute pressure. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? So, I'm gonna clear the fault code. Yes. Boom, that sucker is gone. Now I'm gonna go to active test and I'm gonna hit ISC learned value reset. So I'm gonna hit reset. Yes. Successfully, cool. And what that does, it resets the idle because um, it's an electronic idle, whatever. So this um, resets the value now because we touch those adjustments, the idle could have changed. So this um, fixes, that, fixes that idle. And always check your owner's manual. That's what my owner's manual said. To be more specific, actually it was a repair manual. The repair manual kind of says to deactivate that ISC valve. I did try to do it here, but it, it didn't work. This is not the original Suzuki software. Maybe that's why. But um, however, I believe we're gonna be good with the reset. And because this um, didn't work, that's why, well, it's not if it didn't work or maybe because this is an aftermarket tool, 
maybe I didn't do something correct. But uh, another way to do it is how I unplug this and it makes the bike go into a preset value, which obviously triggers a fault, but no big issue because I can clear the fault with this. And this is pretty cool here because of course you have these active tests here. You do have um, data here when you get fault codes, it seems like. You got the fault codes section and then you have engine values. You got like intake air temperature. There's a whole bunch of values here. Really nice stuff if you have to like diagnose something. You got O2 sensor, five volts, it's showing. There's a whole bunch of uh, values here, it's pretty cool. Okay, now I'm gonna start the bike and make sure that um, fuel injection code is off. I didn't show you that, but it did have the FI light flashing. That means there's a fault code. Hopefully that light is gone and hopefully we have a nice idle. So let's see what's gonna happen. real-time values as the bike is running you see like battery voltage that's pretty cool stuff okay that seems to be good I'm gonna finally put the fairing on it's been a while finally gonna put it on and and it is pretty nice weather today hopefully it's still daytime when I'm done maybe take it for a quick spin all right guys it's still daytime the temperature is dropping but still it's not bad compared to other days pretty warm so i'm gonna take it for a quick spin already i can tell the bike is idling a lot better than it used to before so that's that's a good start and of course i did a tire pressure because it was sitting the pressures went a little bit low so that's important always check that after you have it ridden for a while. Damn, this feels weird. I have it ridden for five months, I think. Not bad, not bad. Still got it. So this is the first ride after doing all that work. I checked the valves. I replaced the coolant. I put the power commander, synchronized the throttle bodies. I changed the fluids in these um, reservoirs, put these caps, it's like I did a lot. Holy shit! Damn, I think I was in third gear in the bike. Uh... It did a little burnout, a little wheelie at the same time. Damn, broskis, if this was a lighter bike, I know what would have happened there. Would have backflipped. I would have done a big wheelie like a horse and backflipped. Thank God this thing has some weight to it and it keeps it on the pavement. I'm going to try it one more time. I want to see if there's a difference with the power commander and the throttle body sink. I have this feeling like I need a turbo now, like I'm kind of used to the bike. I feel like the bike is more crisp now after the the sink and the power commander yeah i do feel like it i don't know revs up easier it gets up and going easier but still man i think not I think, I feel like I'm I'm so used to the bike like I need like a supercharger or a turbo. Alright guys, I'm gonna go put the bike away. Uh, I'm gonna see you in the next video and that's gonna be probably I'm gonna break in the Kawasaki, break in the engine because it's brand new. And I will see you then.